I think that uh, the commodity market will be much more um, accustomed to uh, accepting and trading in the Chinese currency. Weaponization with the finance is a double-bladed sword. I don't think that's a very responsible uh, way of thinking. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the new episode of West's Talk by China News Service. I'm Peng Dawei, the Deputy Director of China News Network Research Institute. Today, we will talk about the latest development of the U.S.-China relations and the impact of the Russian-Ukrainian conflicts on the international monetary system, as well as the energy supplies. Uh, we are joined by Dr. Chu Qiang, Assistant Director of International Monetary Institute, IMI, at the Renmin University of China in Beijing, and also by Dr. Gail Loft, who is the co-director of the Institute for the Analysis of Global Security, IAGS, which is a Washington-based think tank focused on energy security and economic trends. Welcome again. In your recent interview, you told CNBC that you call uh, Washington's sanctions, call it uh, trigger happy, and you mentioned that those sanctions may push countries away from the dollar. Um, could you please elaborate more on this uh, scenario? Well, I've been arguing for many years uh, that the what gives the America its real power in the world is not its military but rather the power of the dollar. The United States now is fighting Russia indirectly via, via Ukraine, but the real weapons that it is using are the financial punishments, the, the sanctions, uh, the disconnect from SWIFT, uh, the secondary sanctions. This has given the United States its power on the world stage since the Second World War. But what we've seen in recent years that uh, the, the long arm jurisdiction and the trigger happiness when it comes to sanctions. You know, one of 10 countries in the world today is, is under US sanctions. It's, it's quite an amazing uh, statistic. And, uh, and more and more countries are being added. Um, let's not forget until not long, long ago, uh, they wanted to even sanction Germany. Uh, they wanted to impose sanctions on India. So nobody seems to be immune from U.S. sanctions. And I think countries are drawing their conclusions. They've seen in recent uh, weeks, these actions are really causing, giving a pause to a lot of central bankers to say, wait a second, maybe we should not be uh, uh, too much in, involved in this dollar system. And also um, uh, energy uh, exporting countries are, are thinking, well, maybe we should not trade all of our uh, oil and gas uh, in, in dollars. Maybe we should uh, shift to alternative currencies in which one country uh, has is, is wielding so much power and is using this power sometimes in an irresponsible and, and overly aggressive manner. And I think the collective thinking and uh, collective actions that all of these countries are taking already and will take in the future <clears throat> will undermine the very same premise that has given America uh, the position that it has today in the world. What do you think of the weaponization of finance? Weaponization with the finance is a double-bladed sword. In Trump's administration, they try to weaponize trade barrier and put a toe on Chinese uh, export goods. But uh, it turns out for every dollar extra tariff on Chinese products, 80 cents will be spent from the U.S. consumer side, like I mentioned. And now American customer, despite they have a very high rising price in all over the spectrum products, and now they have to pay an extra dollar for the tariff. So I don't think that's very responsible. A way of thinking and plus the whole free trade and international trade system has been well lead and been built under uh, the guidance of America so before you tear down your heritage you really need to think more carefully. Uh, most countries are already decreasing their purchases of, of, of US bonds uh, at the very same time that it needs to take so much more debt because to, to fund those crazy deficits. That's not a smart thing to do. You've got to be friends with your banker. You want to be 
uh, to, to be in good relations with your banker, but that's exactly the opposite of what Washington is doing. And I think part of the problem of, of Washington today is because of the nature of its democracy and the power that Congress has. This is the most damaging thing. There's 100 senators and, and hundreds of members of Congress, and everyone has a pet project. And they pass all these bills, but there is no, there's no orchestra, there, there's no um, conductor to this orchestra. Uh, there's no harmonization of all of this. And as a result, over time, you have so many sanctioned people, so many sanctioned entities, so many sanctioned countries, um, and, and nobody get, ever gets off these lists. At some point, you reach a critical mass, and you get a rebellion. And I think what we are seeing today is, is we're seeing the beginning of a rebellion. Is there a new opportunity for the internationalization of renminbi? I think that more and more countries will include the yuan in their reserve currency baskets and uh, it will grow and IMF and all these institutions will hold more and more. And also, I think that uh, the commodity market will be much more um, accustomed to uh, accepting and trading in the Chinese currency because China is the biggest uh, consumer and the biggest importer of, of food and, and energy. I do think it has a bright future because of the conflict uh, of the geopolitics recently. Uh, right now, you probably understand that USA have a rather changed uh, position with a uh, lot of raw material uh, producers country. Uh, for example, with Venezuela, with Middle East countries, uh, with many other countries, they feel, and Russia, of course, so they feel not so trust like before. So they want to diversify their portfolio and their settlement currency for the safety consideration. So they choose to use Chinese yuan as another part of their portfolio. That's the reason why Chinese yuan's share in the international currency market has been expanded. Using US dollar is not as predictable and certain like before.